Hi and welcome to today's training video of how to use your Weebly website. Today we're going to cover the Kavanaugh's Gifts of Distinction website and this will be a great little training video that you can keep in your archives just in case you get stuck or if you just need to train a new employee. Um, we'll really go into detail with everything from the general little edit tools all the way down to how to add products and add pages and things like that. So we'll go ahead and dive in and show some of the details on here. Um, you should have received in your email a link or an invitation to a link for um, signing into the Weebly website. It'll let you set up a username and password using your email address and then whatever password that you would like to create. And you can always sign into the website by either going to Weebly.com or you can go to KavanaughsGifts.com forward slash login. And once you log in and put in your credentials, all you have to do is click on the Edit Site button. And it'll pull you up into the Weebly section. Now this is what our, our, you know, our live website looks like to the general public. We've got a nice little scrolling banner up on the top. A uh, quick little previews that they can scroll through to get to some of the shopping sections. And then also down here on the bottom, which we will update this shortly once I get the password, you'll have an um, Instagram feed that's pulling in all of your images from your Instagram. So let's go ahead and dive back over into Weebly and show you how to use some of these tools. All right, so in this tool section, um, you'll notice over on the left-hand side, all of your basic tool elements pop up when you're underneath this build section. Build is one of the tabs that will have all of the elements over here on the left hand side and then we'll cover pages and store and some of the others later in this video. Now you can see that how Weebly works is it's basically what you see is what you get. All of the building elements on the left hand side all you have to do is click and drag them dump them into the page almost like a set of building blocks and it's going to automatically build that code around whatever you're building. Now just for um, training purposes we're going to skip the home page just for a moment and we'll come back to it so that I can show you how to edit this scrolling banner. But for now we're going to click on the about page. The about page is set up as a no header page which is something that we'll cover once we go under the pages tab here shortly. But for now um, when you scroll over all these elements you'll notice that there's a blue outline that appears and the reason for that is these are different element blocks that have been clicked and dragged from the left hand side. Um, all of them basically when you drag them over they all have more detailed settings and changes that you can make um, and I'll show you how that works. Um, over here on the left hand up on the top we've got title and text both of them are pretty similar except for title will be a similar large font just like this about us section while text is just a general text field and how this works is if you want let's say we wanted to put a text box underneath all these other elements you come over to the left hand side you left click on the element that you want to grab and when it's highlighted blue you keep your mouse clicked on don't release it as you drag that element over you'll notice little blue lines appear as you drag it around. What that's indicating is it will drop that element into that section and build the code around it. So let's say that we want this element to go all the way across the page on the bottom. We click and drag to the bottom of the page and you notice that the blue line appears all the way across. Once we finally fix figure out where we want to put that element we just release the mouse and it automatically put that element in there the text field. Now to edit the text field it's pretty simple all you have to do is click inside of it and you can copy and paste if you have if you've typed up a you know a letter or some information on a different page or you want to copy and paste off of a website you can just simply you know highlight it copy it and then control P or right click and paste it right into this box. So we're just going to type some gibberish letter for now just to show you how all these tools work. It's much like Word where you can highlight the element or the little area that you want to update 
You can bold italicize, underline. You can increase and decrease the font size. You can change it to any color pretty much under the rainbow just by dragging these elements around. And then also another really important element is the link element, which you're going to see this one repeat in a couple different places, like under galleries and images and things like that, which we'll cover. So let's say if in the middle of the text I ha I'm describing, okay, we have fantastic products, we have earrings, we have women's clothing, we have gifts, baby accessories, things like that. Let's say that this actually said accessories. You would just highlight it, and you could actually create a link that would either take you to a completely separate website, or in this case, if we wanted it to be a specific product within the store, you can actually click on product, and under the categories, you can select whatever product that you want it to be. But let's say that we want it to go to a page. All you'd have to do is click on standard page, and then select whatever page and all of these pages are pages that are appearing in your menu. So if we wanted to go to the About page, which you're already there, you would just select it. And when you're finished with it, just click outside the element box. And that has now created that as a link. Now the other thing, you can do um, bolded list, you can do uh, numbered list, all sorts of things. And you can go forward and backwards with your undo buttons just when you're within this field. And when you're finished editing the text, just simply click outside of the area into just a blank space. Now, if I wanted to move this box and I, you know, I don't like where it's at, now you could either delete it, which is obviously the um, X over on the right-hand side, or if I want to click and drag it, you just grab it from the middle when the crosshairs are and just drag it up wherever you want it to go. If I want to move this to a completely separate page, you can actually click on the left-hand arrow, and then you can move it, or you can copy it to any of your other pages within the website. So we're just going to go ahead and delete that instead. Now on this website, you do have the ability, if you want to have a different type of background instead of having just the plain gray, you can click in it and you can actually edit the background. So th at this point you can upload an image just by clicking on image, add image, and then you can either pick from presets or you can upload your own image from, the w from your computer. We'll cancel that. And a lot of this, you know, I'm going to kind of cover it pretty quickly, but you know, obviously you're, it's such a great site that, and easy to use that you're going to pick up on a lot of this really quickly. And you can be able to go around and kind of explore and, and just, you know, try some things out. None of your changes ever appear to the general public until you publish the website, which we'll cover that here in just a moment as well. All right, continuing with some of the other elements, title and text are pretty self-explanatory. But if I wanted to add a photograph in here, I'd click and drag the photograph and I could put it anywhere that I want, just like we covered before. And then you just simply click inside of it. You can upload an image from the computer. And we'll just pull one from my desktop. Let's say that we're going to pick number one here. You'll see that it automatically uploaded. It. it saves it into the website's um, basically storage area so you don't never have to go hunting for the image it's always just right in front of you and much like the text field when you click on an image you have more detailed choices that you can go into um, you can edit the image by cropping it or changing the format the coloring things like that you can replace it with a new image Lightboxes, basically, if you've ever gone to a website and when you click on the photo, it makes it full screen, that's what Lightbox is. Link is what we covered before with the text. You can actually make it so that when you click on this photograph, if let's say if the photograph um, was a picture of accessories, when you would click on it, it could actually take you to the accessories page. And you can see it's all the same elements, the same as the text was. You can align it, you can add spacing, 
by adding more spacing on the top or bottom margins. And you can even add captions and you can go under this advanced section where if you want to add a border, let's say we just add a thick border. Now you can see that it's added a thick gray line border all the way around that image. All right, and we'll delete that one. Gallery works much the same way as well, except that you have the option to upload multiple photographs instead of just one. So if we click and drag a gallery element, you can click on here, upload from the computer, and then you can select, you know, let's say two or three images. It's going to automatically upload them for you. And then you can actually click within this field and you can add as many columns as you want, take it away. You can add captions, you can go under advanced settings, all similar to the, the image box that you saw before. And slideshow is also the same thing. You just simply upload all the images that you want, but it gives you the option to have, um, you know, you can have thumbnails, you can have numbers, or it can just be a simple slideshow with the arrows. And I'll let you just play around with that when you upload images if you want a slideshow. Just click on the advanced settings and you can kind of play around with all the different changes for it. Um, map is not really overly important on here. Um, simp I'm not a big fan of it just because it's kind of a gray map, as you can see. Um, whenever we cover the contact page in a moment, I'll show you with what we did with the Google. We actually did embed code, which is this element here. So we'll click and delete that. A contact form is just kind of a generic form, but um, contact forms and newsletter forms, um, when you click and drag them onto a page, you'll notice that I've already got these little distinct areas for name, email, comments, um, and even then the titles up here. However, you'll notice if you look at your elements on the left-hand side, when I click inside of the contact form, they change. Now I have the option for short text boxes, large text boxes. You can do bullet options, drop-down menus. You can allow people to upload images to you. Um, you can make it a requirement for phone numbers, which you would just dump it right into the contact form. And you'll notice that anything that has these little red asterisks means that it's a required field, and they're not going to allow somebody to submit the form unless they fill in everything that's asterisk. So if you don't want that to be a requirement, just like with the text box, when you click on it, you have even more advanced settings. And you can actually click on it to make it so it's no longer a required element. And this is, again, something you can play around with and make your, um, your contact form any way that you want it to be. Now, your form options, this is where you'll go in. You would want to change, you know, I just temporarily put in the itsatopsilthing.com but you would put in your email address, um, whether it's Corey's email or if it is specifically for Kavanaugh Gifts, that's where you'd want to put in your email information. And then if you want to call it a contact form or whatever you want to call it, that's what appears in your subject, your subject line when the email is sent to you. And when we're finished with that, we just click on Save. And we're just going to go ahead and delete this one. Now, sections not is a new tool, but it's not an overly important one. Um, you can play around with it and see if you like it, but honestly, I, I, it's one of those tools that I think was kind of pointless. Um, but you can actually put dividers if you want a divider line in between different sections. And you can see that gray divider line that appeared. And just like any other element, when you click on it, you have more settings that you can adjust. You also have spacer, which spacer is important. Um, let's say I need a little bit more space between the About Us and that line. You just click and drag Spacer there, dump it in. And then you can click over here in the middle, drag it up and down, and it'll automatically format the space size for you. Okay. Now, um, the only other ones that get a little bit more detailed and that are more important, um, we're going to cover them on the registry page and the shop page, but you have your e-commerce elements down here. And then the other important ones are the ones up here.
let's say that if I wanted to embed a YouTube video like this training video, I could actually click and drag a YouTube video and that element block and dump it in. And all I have to do to have a, a video appear is just click on it and type in the URL. So let's say that it's you know youtube.com forward slash Kavanaugh gifts, uh, Kavanaugh's gifts. Then that would actually put the video in there so that you could play it. All right. Another important element that you can use is file. So if you want to have a file that people can download, like you know if it's a PDF form, you can actually dump this in. And then all you have to do is click and upload the file that you want somebody to have to download. Um, I don't think I have any PDFs on here. Let's see. Let's just say if I had an invoice or something like that that I wanted someone to um, be able to download. You can actually upload that form, whether it's PDF, Word document, doesn't matter. And now anytime that uh, somebody goes to the website, they can download that file. All right, we're going to delete these elements. And again, you can play around with these and see um, what you think about them and, and kind of use which ones that you think you're going to need for the website. All right, so we're going to go over to the registry page, which um, we've set this up kind of unique because what we've done is these elements down here on the bottom are technically categories in the store. So when somebody wants to have a registry, a gift registry for the wedding, all you're going to have to do is set them up with their own category within your website, which we'll cover, you know, in the store section here shortly. Excuse me. And what we can do is any of your products that you want the Browns or the Kavanaugh's to be able to, you know, allow for people to purchase for them, um, they'll follow under that category. So we'll, we'll go ahead and cover that here in just a moment as well. Now on the shop page, what this is, this is actually a, um, a header layout, which again we'll cover when we go over the pages section. But when you scroll down, you'll see that all of your different categories for your shop is appearing here. Now they won't automatically appear. This is an element that you can see, it's called categories. And when we click and, you know, we dragged it over onto the page and dumped it in there, you click on it and you can manage your categories. This is where we would select it, all of the categories that we want to appear on the shop page. So let's say, you know, we'll take this one off as if it's not on there. But let's say that we wanted to add a new category. We would click on Manage Categories and let's select categories we will scroll on to select categories there we go and this will show you all of your different categories and you can see that wedding is not selected and neither are the subcategories of registry which you know you can put them on here if you want but I would suggest leaving them on the registry page which on the registry page that you saw a moment ago ago it was the same thing as the category section it's just that we only selected the registries of the Browns and the Kavanaugh's so we're going to add weddings to that and then yes we want to select all eight categories and then wedding appears down on the bottom but if we want to click and drag it to a different area all you have to do is just drag it up and dump it where you want it to go all right We'll hit done. And you can now see that wedding has appeared over on this left hand side. All right. Sorry there for a moment. I got choked up. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and um, basically products works the exact same way even if you you know if you just wanted one specific product on a page you would just click and drag that over and that's going to dump it into the products page so before we cover the store section let's go ahead and cover pages pages is all of your pages that appear here the home about registry contact and shop so let's say that we wanted to add a new page 
all we'd have to do is go to the pages category or pages um, tab up here click on the plus sign and then we can do either a blog page a category page so if we want it to be specifically a wedding category page then you could actually click on there and it's going to appear all of the things just for wedding all of the products if we want it to be a standard page you click on standard page and it's technically set up for a header page automatically but you can change that to a no header you can do blog layouts or you can even do the header slider which is what's on the home page which we'll cover here in just a moment and then once you're finished with this once you set up your page you name it whatever you want it to be we'll just say you know photos click outside of that area and you can see now that photos appears into our menu but let's say that I don't want it to appear on the end I want it to be after the about us section we'll hit done and you can actually click and drag this to appear in between about and registry you can see now there it's in between if we want it to be a sub page like follow under about all you'd have to do is click and drag it a little bit to the right and that now makes it a sub page of about and you can see that it appears underneath all right when we want to delete a page just simply click on it delete yes we want to delete this page okay so now that we're back on the home page we can kind of cover this um, the slider the slider is already built in it's a woo slider and what this is it's a you know a third-party element that's been added to the website and it'll all you know automatically be updated with the latest code you'll never have to worry about it not working but I want to show you how you can add and delete images now what we had to do with with these three images that are appearing you can see you can actually put in five images but the three images that are appearing I did have to edit them to a specific size which I can send you that or if you need me just to update the um, the images so that they all appear the same size you can just email them to me and I'll edit them for you but when I received all these photos they were a vertical really tall image and that doesn't translate very well when you're stretching it all the way across the screen because basically all you see is a giant image you don't see any of the other elements on the home page but if we wanted to add another photograph all we'd have to do in this section is come over to where the photo is click on it upload a photo just like we did um, earlier we'll add the example image here you can see it automatically dumps it right in there so once we publish the website it'll just be a scrolling image banner just like this one was alright and if we wanted to put any text or anything you can see there's a little gray dotted area around there you can actually click and put text field in that image so if you want to you know, type a description on the image you could do one make it you know bold make it as large as you need it to be and let's say if we wanted to even drop it down you just hit return and drop down and when we don't need that element we just click on it and delete it if we want to make this again if we want to make this image um, a link like we talked about before you just click on link and you can actually link it to any of the pages or you can just delete that image if that's not one that you want all right under here this is again that category section the only thing that we changed was when you click on categories you can actually change the layout um, on the shop page it's set up as a grid this one is a single row that way people can just scroll through all right now um, we're kind of in the home stretch now um, we're going to go ahead and show you how to use the store elements and that'll be pretty much it I mean it's pretty simple tools to use on the website and again um, you can feel free to play around with any of these elements now if you do get hung up just give us a call here at loggerhead designs um, or shoot us an email if you've got a problem but I'm pretty sure this video will cover everything any of the questions that you're going to have 
All right, so you can see that there's a shopping cart already built into this website. Now there are some other features that you can unlock that are more detailed features, which we'll, we'll cover all of them. Um, but basically that's just an increase in your package with Weebly. Okay, now to cover the store area. If we come up here to the store tab, I'm going to click on it. And this is going to show kind of just the, the home screen. Um, once you're ready to set up your shipping features, if you want to, you know, offer different shipping, um, I can kind of cover all that with you and help you set that up. But it's not overly important right this moment. Some of the most important areas is obviously orders. Um, as you get orders, as people order things on the website, they'll appear here. And you'll be able to click on them and actually put in your, um, your tracking numbers and several things like that. Uh, all those elements are pretty self-explanatory once the orders come in and you can click on them. You can also, with an upgraded feature to the business plan, you can offer coupons. So if you want to do an online coupon, like, you know, that would be 50 off, you know, for 50% off, you could actually do 500FF and advertise that on Facebook, which is something we can also cover if we upgrade to the business plan. All right, so the important section here as well is your categories and your products. Now we temporarily just have two products in here that I just put as an example. You can add the products as, um, as many as you want. <clears throat> now we'll cover categories first. When you click on categories, you can see that our accessories, art, wedding, um, all the different ones that we have selected over time um, are are appearing into this box here. So if we want to add a category, I would just simply click on Add Category, and I would call it whatever I want. So let's say if it was, you know, outerwear. <laughs> Can't type. Outerwear. And then we would just add a, a photo, whatever you want it to be. And if you've already uploaded some products, you can actually select the products from, and it would be a long list if you've got, you know, 200 images, but you could actually select any of these um, products to be as under as many category sections as you would like them to be. And we would just save that. And now you can see on the bottom of the list our outerwear is appearing. If we want to rearrange this, be it in alphabetical order or wherever you want it to be, you just come down here, you can see my um, asterisk has changed to the arrows, left click on it and drag it wherever you want it to appear in the list. <clears throat> but we're going to delete this one since it's not one that we actually need. Okay, so this one, um, you really don't have to go into any other details other than just creating the category and then selecting the image for it. Now for the actual products, when we go to add a product, we'll go to the product area, click on add product, and here it's going to give you the area to be able to add what the, the product name and description is. So we'll just give it a random name, um, we'll just say, you know, I don't know, outerwear, like we were saying before. and you can put in your description, you can copy and paste it in there, you can type it in, and then you have all of the elements over here just like you did in the text in the um, the other forms where you can bold, italicize, make links, all that kind of stuff. And then we can add images of the products, and you can add as many of, of the photos as you would like it to have. All right, and you know, nine times out of ten, you're going to have a physical good, um, but this gives you the option so that if you did have a digital good or a service, then you could offer that as well. But we're just going to stick with a physical good. And our price, you can either just put in a regular price, or if you want it to have the appearance of being on sale, you could say, okay, <clears throat> original price is $50, and it's on sale for, you know, $47.95. 
Weight is only important, it's, it's an optional feature, but it does get important whenever you're dealing with shipping calculations. Now, if you're using just like USPS shipping boxes where the weight doesn't matter as long as it fits in the box, then you don't have to worry about this. But um, if you would set up an account in the future with UPS, FedEx, then this is where you'd want to put in your weight of the product. That way, when somebody checks out, all of the weights combined together to figure out what the actual shipping cost is going to be. If you have a SKU number for the product, then that's optional as well. You can put in the SKU numbers. Now for here, you know, you can also track your inventory. Um, <clears throat> you can see that this is a required upgrade by Weebly to their business package, which is a little bit more money monthly for the, the actual e-commerce side of it. But, um, you can actually track your inventory. So let's say that you have six t-shirts. Uh, once all six of them are sold, it'll actually show, so, excuse me, show on the website that they're all sold out. <clears throat> all right. And next we'd want to select what categories that this is going to fall under. Um, kind of worked out. It was already generically picked with clothing, but when we click on categories, you can actually put it under as many categories as you want. So let's say that this product is one of the products that the Browns wanted listed on their registry. Well, you would just come to this product, click on categories, or excuse, yeah, uh, click on categories under the product. You'd select the Browns, and then let's say it's a clothing. That way it's going to appear on their registry as well. We'll hit save. <clears throat> Now, product options, this is important for if you're doing like t-shirts and you want to show different sizes. So what you would do is you'd have a drop-down list, and let's say that it says size, or you could do color, or whatever the case is. If it was candles, you could say, you know, smells or scents. And then your option choices, um, once you type in one, you either hit a comma, or you can hit return or enter. So we're going to do, um, let's just say that it was a extra small return. We'll do a small, medium, and you could go on and on and on. Once you hit save and you scroll down, you'll see that you can actually adjust the individual price. So let's say for whatever reason the medium is a little bit more expensive. You could say the original price, $52.00. You know, it's now, you know, $49.95 or whatever. You can put in that specific product SKU if it's got a different one, the weight, and you can even add images of the individual t-shirts. So let's say that you wanted to show, you know, up here in the main menu, you wanted to show all 11 colors available. Down here, you could actually have, okay, we have medium seafoam green. You would select that image and then you just hit save. And now that is a new product within the list of products. So when I go, we'll go ahead and we'll exit out of this for a second just for demonstration purpose. If I go ahead and I publish this, <clears throat> which is something that we're jumping ahead, we'll show here shortly. I'll go back to the live website and under shop, when I go to, I believe it was in clothing, you'll see now that outerwear, outerwear is appearing. It says it's on sale. The price ranges from $47.95 to $49.95. When I click on it, it shows me my description, what the prices are, and the price is going to change. If I go to extra small, You'll notice that it shows that, hey, it was originally $50, now it's on sale for $47.95. I can add as many of those to the cart as I want, add to cart, and it's going to pop it up here on the cart, which we'll cover the, the checkout here in just a moment. So we'll go back to the Weebly website to where we were editing. Go back into the store under products. <clears throat> And we'll go ahead and just get rid of that one since it's obviously a dead product. You can click on it here, 
you can assign it to a new category, mark it as visible or invisible if you, let's say it's a product that you don't have available now, so but you will get more later, so you don't want it to appear on the website, you can actually mark it as invisible. But we're going to go ahead and delete this one. Okay, so another new feature that's um, available once you upgrade is allowing people to leave reviews. And the review options, um, basically, you can see down here, it controls the reviews of how long after the order's placed that um, you can send them an actual email and request, hey, leave us a review for what you thought of that great t-shirt that you bought. Under store emails, there's already a bunch of generic emails that have already been created for you, but you can actually come in here and you can edit the email. So like if you want it to be a little bit more personalized for the order confirmation, you can edit email. And you can see it generically, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to show them their shipping information, what they purchased, how much it costs, how they did their shipping, what the shipping cost. It'll have all your information on the bottom of the receipt. But if you want to edit it so that instead of thank you for your purchase, it could have, you know, a more distinct um, message to it. Or even if you want to add a logo, anything like that, you can just edit that here. All right. Now under setup, this is a section where um, some of this has already been filled in. But you can see the store information, general information of if it's Imperial or or if it's metric and pounds, that kind of thing. You can change your layout, which you see that, you know, when you go in the, in the actual store, we'll select just jewelry. You can see that over here on the, the left-hand side, normally, you know, it'll have boxes for all of your jewelry. And then over on the left-hand side, you have all of the other categories. So when you click on a different category, they can scroll through the different products that's where you would be able to edit this feature so that if you just want it to be only block or right now it's set up so that it has the sidebar and the blocks you can do it either way um, you can also allow show social icons which that will allow you to be able to you know have people share it they can share that product on Facebook and things like that and this is where your Google analytic code comes in where that's a little bit more details that I'll take care of for you all right, for checkout, um, we've already set it up for your PayPal, but if you wanted to connect it, you know, it temporarily right now, we need to disconnect this, but it's temporarily connected to my Square account. Once you would set up a Square account and a PayPal, we will, um, you know, link these together, and that's basically where you would edit that information. If you want to edit your store policies, you'd edit it here. Checkout options if you want to give people, you know, the ability to, um, you know, make a phone number optional, which I wouldn't do. You always want to be able to call your customer or you can enable a note to seller. All right. So shipping, this is a section where, um, you know, this is also obviously a something that you need to do if you want to upgrade your account. But your shipping address, you can add in the shipping address from where they're going to be shipped from which would be the store address. Shipping rules um, is not something we really need to go over yet, but if we do end up setting up UPS, I'll assist you with setting up your shipping rules and also with setting up your tax information. All right, well, other than that, that is pretty much it. Um, if there's any questions you have regarding some of the elements on the site, um, you know, feel free to give me a call here at the office. Shoot me an email, either one. Um, theme is, you know, before I forget, theme is not really one that's important. That's a little bit more of the detailed information for the coding, so you can ignore that one. Apps is also something that's an advanced feature that if you decide that you want to add some elements, I can teach you how to do that with the apps. But for the website as it is, this is pretty much all the training that um, you're really going to need to get started. But thanks again for watching this video. Feel free to give me a call anytime. The number's 910-541-0143, or you can shoot me an email or even a text. But I hope you have a great day, and I hope this video was um, informative for you.